Well hello there. Today we're gonna just have a bit of fun I think and we're gonna do a photo challenge but it's gonna be a bit different than uh, uh, a photo challenge I would normally do because I'm using uh, a cheap camera and that is the 550D uh, yeah 550D and I bought this camera about three years ago for I think it was 190 euros it may have been cheaper actually um, well and it's had a bit of wear I don't know if you can see that but the LCD screen is cracked I'm just gonna see if using a cheap camera with an old sensor still cuts the mustard when it comes to stock photography so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take photos with this uh, camera and upload them to the stock agencies and uh, see if they get passed or rejected um, and also if they make money for me so the aim of today is to see if we can still make money using a very basic cheap old camera and some cheap lenses as well. Uh, the lens I've got on this one is a 28mm uh, 2.8 prime lens. It's not the sharpest lens in the world um, and I bought it uh, new for 230 euros about 10 years ago. Um, so it's a kind of medium to wide angle uh, lens and another cheap lens that I'm using is this 50 millimeter 1.8 mark 2 uh, prime lens and uh, this costs around 100 to 120 euros uh, at the moment may uh, give or take a euro uh, or more I haven't used these lenses for so long they're absolutely covered in dust just give it a quick blow off with this little mini blower that gets rid of any excess dust that's gathered in the lens once that's done I'll take these little cloths well actually they're papers that you can buy from the camera store put a bit of uh, lens cleaner on it one drop is enough and then I give the lens that hasn't been cleaned for six months a good going over with the tissue I find these lens tissues really good. Um, they're disposable and unlike cloths they don't uh, smear the lens if they've been used more than once because you throw them out and then if the lens is still dirty you use a fresh one. And I found them really uh, effective for cleaning lenses. So that's that lens dusted and cleaned. We'll check the other one out. I uh, see a bit of dust so maybe I can just get rid of that with some blowing yeah job done it's clean as well so we don't have to use a fresh cloth or tissue so uh, I've got a cheap lens or lenses I've got a cheap camera so let's uh, go out and take some stock photos Somebody ought to come along and let you down So you could see my side and how it feels to hit the ground How can you say that nothing's different, that we should pick up the pieces Somebody ought to come along and let you down So I've found an electric hybrid car charging here on the side of the road 
and I always love uh, photographing these uh, hybrid cars on their charge points and what makes this one different is that someone has wrapped all the cables around the uh, the filler flap uh, so that makes uh, adds a bit of color to the dark background so I'm going to take a stock photo I'm going to go firstly wide with my 28 millimeter and then I might swap lenses and uh, go with the 50mm after that. And now I'll uh, swap lenses and get some close-ups or diff different kinds of style photos with the 50mm. Yeah, so what I did there was I went right down to f2.2 with the 50mm to blur the background out and uh, the subject that I had in focus will be sharp but everything else will be soft which is what the 50 is really good for it doesn't have image stabilization either so I got uh, a couple of tighter shots that just showed uh, details of the uh, the charger and uh, I think we're done with this uh, hybrid vehicle we'll move on to the next subject so I was just uh, riding past some houses here and I see in one of the driveways there's a uh, a tow away sign uh, telling people that if they park their car over the driveway of this house their car will be towed away and stock photography isn't too glamorous but uh as I was saying stock photography isn't too glamorous but uh, bread and butter images like that can be used every day on the stock agencies because they're a part of people's daily lives uh, so I'll have a shot at that at f5 and probably uh, bigger apertures uh, like 5.6 or s7.1 if the shutter speed is good enough with the uh, the 50 millimeter so here goes Yeah, so I took a number of shots of that uh, tight and wide as well just to give a bit of uh, environmental uh, awareness about the photo so you can see a bit of the driveway maybe a part of the car in the photo and also uh, portrait and landscape modes just to give the uh, buyers the option I think they call this kind of thing uh, fly tipping in the UK uh, but I just uh, know it as uh, like dumping someone has dumped a toilet here and over the back is the uh, wash basin so obviously someone has done a, a bathroom renovation and they couldn't be bothered getting rid of the, the old uh, toilet and uh, bathroom stuff yeah, in the normal way they just dumped it on the side of the road so that's a topical kind of problem in society and well worth a stock photo so I've got a number of wide angle shots tight shots different perspectives from high and low and to the side and I'm not gonna make too much work out of it but I'll just select the best one I think is uh, suitable for stock photography and upload that. So I finished the shoot in the local shopping district and I took some uh, environmental photos of the area and a couple of them were taken in uh, challenging light conditions I think the highest ISO I went up to was 640 so that'll be interesting to see how the the file holds up in Lightroom when I edit it 
and also, uh, oh, a bit overexposed. Now I'm underexposed. And also, uh, I took one where it looked a bit blown out, so I underexposed with the uh, light meter and took another one. And uh, the 550D uh, still looked like it was overexposing a bit, so I'm going to try and bring back the highlights in Lightroom. Uh, but that's it for the stock shoot with the uh, camera challenge of the 550D, and we'll go back to the Lightroom Studio and see how the files hold up. Okay, so now we've gone into Lightroom and I've uploaded the photos and we'll take a look at this first one. I've done a bit of a quick edit of it and it was taken with the 28mm at 1 200th of a second at aperture f5.6 ISO 100 and I have to admit um, yeah, I took this photo with the 550D, or if you're in the States, the T2i. And it's a bit of an old sensor with a really old processor. And I just think that the processor really struggles to deal with things like highlights and shadows. So with this file, after doing an edit for about 10 minutes to reduce the highlights and bump up the shadows and increase the contrast and colour, I'm still not totally happy with the image. If you look at the histogram, it's relatively well exposed, but in my eye this foreground still looks a bit dark and low in contrast. And this background uh, still has blown out highlights even though I've got the highlight tab all the way down so uh, it's not the most impressive image I've taken I'll just uh, reduce the go into um, remove chromatic aberration and enable the profile corrections there just to make sure there's no barrel distortion or any fringing like purple or yellow fringing and yeah here it looks a bit yellowy so I might adjust the white balance a little bit maybe take it down in temperature touch yeah but that's the best I've been able to get this file um, and it highlights that schools are or the uh, primary schools are going back and that uh, they're open again and they have kids or people have to keep a one and a half meter distance outside the school and you're not allowed to um, gather a bunch of people uh, waiting outside and it also explains about uh, keeping cars away so that's a topical uh, photo you've got the sign here telling you what's happening from the municipality and in the background you've got the kids school bikes here so as far as composition is concerned I'm happy with it but I'm just not totally happy with the uh, yeah the way the lens or the camera's processor has handled uh, the highlights and the shadows but uh, we'll move on to the next photo. I will upload that and see if it gets past. A photo of this uh, hybrid electric vehicle. I think it's a Mitsubishi four-wheel drive. And that was also taken with the 28mm. Um, I've bumped up the contrast because I noticed in the out-of-focus area where there was a lot of white uh, 
this grey part of the pole was really low in contrast so I've bumped that up. I've also smoothed out a bit of the noise even though it was taken at one hundredth of a second at ISO 100 just uh, went into the dark area here and just added a touch of noise reduction at 14. Also did a basic profile correction and removes any chromatic aberration and the focus point is on the charge handle here and it's far, uh, it's focused not spectacularly so so I added a small touch of sharpening at 25 and of course I also um, added some vibrancy just to bring out the colors and uh, richness of each uh, color present and it's uh, not oversaturated I didn't do any saturation um, you can see the details of the vehicle it's in focus where I want it to be in focus and uh, I'm relatively happy with that this camera and lens combination does mean that I have to uh, do more editing. I have to keep my shutter speeds up because the lens doesn't have image stabilization on it either. So uh, that's the second one. Let's go to the third. And this one was taken with the 50 millimeter 1.8 Mark II at 250th of a second at f5. And immediately as soon as I opened this file I noticed it was more contrasty um, and the colors popped more and when I went in at a hundred percent it's a bit slow I noticed it was tack sharp without uh, having to add any sharpening to the image I do see a little bit of uh, like the highlight is ghosting there a touch but it's not too bad but uh, this uh, 50 millimeter nifty 50 1.8 mark 2 is about 100 euros less expensive than the 28 millimeter f 2.8 I was using uh, but the image quality is significant is significantly better Okay, I've deliberately left this dead space here just in case people want to use it as copy space. Um, I've noticed that the number plate's been blurred and I'm going to leave this image as an editorial I think just because I'm not 100% certain if there's any copyright on this sign by the local municipality or if this property is recognizable in combination with this car. So to be safe, I'll just leave it as editorial. But I'm really happy with this. Um, yeah, so we'll move on to the next one. Here we have another. We can uh, upload this as a commercial image because there's no um, branding. There's no property in the photo. And I took this with the 28mm as well at f5, ISO 100 at 160th of a second. And I've gone with the rule of thirds here, keeping the object in the left hand third of the image and then leaving this area to put it in its environment, which is on the side of a footpath in a like a parkland area with a road going through it. And I like this image not because I'm fond of looking at toilets but because um, it shows up a, a social problem uh, often where people dump uh, their refuse in public areas and it costs a lot of money to clean up so um, it's a subject that I have seen in the news so is news worthy and people would probably want to uh, use this image uh, when they 
highlight the problem on their websites or news sites or whatever. So uh, I'm happy with this. What I did was I bumped up the exposure. I also added more sharpening because uh, even though I was taken at 1 60th of a second, it, it's not that sharp. So I'm, there's a question in mind in my there's a question mark in my mind as to whether it will be accepted, to be honest. But it'll be interesting to see. I haven't added any noise. I'll just add a touch there, just to make sure. In the darker areas, if there's any visible noise. And also here I noticed there was some chromatic aberration with some purple fringing. So I went down to the uh, settings and went into color and just removed and <laughs> removed just removed uh, the purple fringing by reducing the defringe amount and that worked out well so I'm happy with the composition of that photo but just a bit worried about the sharpness I've looked through my other photos and that all seem pretty much the same regarding sharpness so we'll be interesting to see if it gets accepted. Okay, um, I went into the uh, shopping district as well and took some photos. And one photo I noticed was of these electric bikes outside an electric bike shop. Uh, and I noticed that the uh, it was quite dark and the lens was 28mm and it's the Canon 550D or T2i and it, the metering in it just seemed to really struggle with uh, this dark area and it's significantly overexposed pretty much an unusable image actually um, I should have looked at the back of the camera more, but the nature of stock photography, sometimes you just don't want to hang around a place for very long. You just want to take the photo and go. Uh, so I didn't study the back of my camera. Um, if I had, I would have probably uh, adjusted my uh, exposure settings for the camera. But uh, the exposure was set on uh, zero, so in in the middle of the uh, the range, and because it was dark, the ISO was 640. That's the noise is not too bad, but it is visible at 640. But uh, yeah, it it's just not sharp. I had the focus on this part of the rail and you can really see that the noise has desaturated the colors um, it's produced kind of spots um, so I'm not going to even bother trying to edit this one it's just uh, overexposed and noisy and soft so the cheap camera sensor and lens combination has kind of failed with this one. Admittedly, it was my own fault. You know, a bad tradesman blames his tools and that's what I'm doing here. Uh, it was at 1 40th of a second at F4, so a really shallow depth of field. So I only have to blame myself for that one just highlights the camera's limitations though and for this one as well I noticed uh, it's also overblown and if you look at the uh, histogram here it's really heavily to the right and the highlights are blown out completely so I'm not going to try and bring back those highlights either I noticed the camera was overexposing so I actually put this as underexposed by one third of a stop and it's still overexposed so um, 
I'm gonna have to uh, be mindful with this camera if I ever feel like uh, using it again which I probably won't uh, it's just an interesting characteristic of this old camera and its sensor I guess okay and then I adjusted even further and I got this um, photo which is slightly underexposed but the shadows aren't burnt in I think you can do something with this okay so I'm just going to upload and caption and keyword uh, some more photos and then upload them to the stock agencies if you want to look at my uh, the way I caption and keyword photos then go into my YouTube channel and check out my uh, previous photo challenge where I take photos and also show how I do the captioning and keywording and uploading. Okay, well that's it in Lightroom. It's another beautiful sunny day at the beach and I'm sitting in a unused beach cafe which is not likely to open within the next uh, couple of days, couple of weeks or who knows couple of months um, but let's talk about the results of my uploading those photos uh, that I sent to the stock agency yesterday. Um, I uploaded nine photos to Shutterstock and they were really quick in uh, evaluating the photos and uh, either um, passing them or refusing them and out of the nine photos that I uploaded three were approved so it's uh, if you look at it from that perspective it's a disappointing result but if you go into it a little bit deeper there's uh, reasons uh, that are important uh, that these images were refused or not approved so I'll start off with the first one that I took and that was of the uh, primary school sign outside the school and um, it was not approved because of image quality it was uh, sorry it was not uh, not approved because of image quality uh, Shutterstock said it was non-licensable uh, subject and they weren't accepting photos with that subject matter which kind of doesn't make sense because in, here in the Netherlands anyway the primary schools have gone back to uh, school so it's all in the news and it's a relevant editorial subject so it doesn't make much sense I uploaded two photos of that one landscape and one portrait and they were both refused on those grounds uh, the next one was electric car charging uh, photos and I took three photos of that and out of the three one was approved and Shutterstock said that the ones that weren't approved were because of um, uh, similar content uh, which is a bit strange because I took different angles uh, of this uh, charge handle going into this car with the cables um, so it's debatable whether that was uh, a good reason or not but in the end it doesn't really matter it wasn't approved I can always upload it again and see if it will uh, be approved a second time and that goes for the first photo as well the next photo was of the towaway sign and uh, the close-up that I took of that was approved um, it said that everything was fine but the one that I took with the 50 millimeter lens uh, that was really sharp uh, was not approved it said the uh, main subject was out of focus or there was noise so either they uh, mistakenly took that the main focus of the photo was the car in the background instead of the subject which I said tow away sign which was in the title or uh, they've, I'm not sure what happened because it was at ISO 100, it was tack sharp. I did notice a bit of ghosting on the whites, so perhaps that was the issue. Who knows? Um, let's see what the other photo, oh yeah, the, um, the toilets. Uh, 
I uploaded two photos of the toilets, a sort of close up and a wide angle and the wide angle uh, was approved. I was a bit worried um, whether that would be approved or not because of the sharpness uh, but uh, it shouldn't have worried, that one was approved. The more tighter photo of a close-up uh, was not approved because it was similar content. Um, so it was an interesting result. There was only one question from the agency as to the uh, picture quality and that was the one that I thought was really sharp. But when I think back there was a bit of ghosting so I can understand that perhaps unless it, they uh, misunderstood that the main subject of the focus was not the main subject. So what conclusions can I draw from this exercise? Well I think the main conclusion is that anybody can buy a camera and lens combination for under $300 and successfully upload to the stock agencies. Um, a lot of the lack of success is due to the foibles of the acceptance uh, process in this case I believe uh, rather than the, uh, the camera and the lens that was used. The Canon T2i is an old camera but it still has some power. It can also take 1080 video and it has a fantastic range of lenses that you can fit to this uh, relatively old sensor and old processor. So uh, I know Nikon and Sony have similar models in their range with similar lens uh, capabilities. So I think anyone who is attached to a different system can do a similar uh, exercise with also a budget camera and lens uh, setup. Um, and back to video as well, uh, the T2i or the Canon 550D can also do 1080. So if you want to upload video to the stock agencies, there's nothing stopping you uh, from doing it with uh, this $300 setup. And uh, I have not used the kit lens, the 18-55, which is image stabilized, but I think for video uh, the quality would probably uh, be fine. So uh, it was an interesting exercise, I learnt a lot from it, also a lot from my own limitations as a photographer, but uh, yeah it was great. So if you found this interesting or useful in any way, feel free to subscribe or like or ring on that bell notification and I hope you had as much fun as I did uh, doing this and I'll see you next week. Stay fit and happy. All the best. Somebody ought to come along and let you down If you still wanted to be loved You should have never let me go Hope somebody will break your heart Leave you crying on the floor